we're going to start our look at logarithms with how they compare to exponential growth. So what I've got here is I have a picture of exponential growth <laughs> when y equals 2 to the x. What I'm going to graph is its inverse. So whenever I'm looking for an inverse and I'm looking at coordinate points, basically I just switch the x and the y values around. So all I'm going to do in this chart here is I'm going to switch the x and y values around and then plot those so I can take a peek at what the graph of this looks like. But again, like it says up here, be careful. Their graph on the x-axis goes by 0.5s each one. Because I made that mistake the first time and was like, good. And wasn't real happy about it. So, all right. And what you end up finding is that you've got yourself it's kind of a mirror image over the line y equals x. You have symmetry. You have a reflection. And the cool thing about this is this reflection that you see down here is actually the graph of a logarithm of that growth function. So we can start to kind of see how these things go together because our graphs are going to start looking more like this, almost like a growth graph, but not exactly. So once I see that, we're going to take a peek here at a couple of things. Okay, what's the domain and range of this new function that I have? Well, I notice it's going to kind of keep going here for a bit. So. I notice for sure that it goes down and it goes up forever. But what I may start to look at and I may start to notice is this, if I were to keep coming down with it. So like if I were to try to go to let's say into the negatives, I would start getting error messages. So this time, my domain is going to go from 0 to infinity. Because this is going to curve off and just kind of start coming this way. You're like, well, wait a minute. We just got done with growth, and it always hugged the x-axis and kind of had its asymptote there. This one's going to be the opposite. Now we're going to be hugging the y-axis with this. And that kind of takes us into this one. Does this graph have any asymptotes? Yes, because if I were to keep going with this, my x values will approach 0 but never cross it. They'll never become negative. And we're going to do a couple of those in the calculator where you can see that a little bit better than this right now in just a little bit. So you're like, okay, so basically we're taking the flip of a growth function, and we are. So how do the values of my new function change as x increases? Well, y increases, or you could call it f of negative 1x, but y is just a simpler way of looking at it. As I keep going to the right and my x values keep getting bigger, my y values keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger as well. It almost works the same way as growth does. So is there a way to put a name to this? You know. What is this graph? How would I draw it? How would I put it in the calculator? How's all this working? It kind of lets us start to see what an actual logarithmic function would look like. And that's what we're going to be starting to talk about a little bit. 
So a logarithm definition wise is the exponent to which a base must be raised in order to obtain a given value. We know that two to the third power equals eight. So the logarithm base two, that's what this little subscript number is gonna be, we're gonna call it a base, is three and you can write it like this. So basically, what I start to do with this, and I'm trying to find a solution, and I'm gonna circle this in. And I'm actually gonna write it bigger over here because we can label things a little bit easier that way. B is always going to be my base. When I go into put it into an exponent form, it's going to be the base of my exponent. My solution, you could call it, in air quotes, of a logarithm is going to be my exponent and the number that I take my base to is gonna be n. So let me, let me put a numeric example with it that might make a little more sense. So like I may have something like the log, I wanna use a different one than they did. Um, if I were to be given this logarithm, what it actually is saying in its own special way is that 3, my base, the p is going to be my exponent to the fourth power equals 81, which I do know to be a true statement. This is just a different way to write it and a different way in order for me to get other values that may not be as simple. And we'll play with that too on how we can do those with the calculator as we go along. But just understanding the back and forth format from an logarithmic to an exponential is what we're looking for. So what we're going to do here now then is just a couple of basic definition type things. Whenever you're having a log, we assume its base is 10, okay? That its little number here is 10 unless we're told otherwise. Sort of like when we have square roots, we always assume it's 2. If it's an exponent, we don't see a value, we always assume it's 1. With a logarithm, we always assume there's a base number there, a 10 if we're not told. And we'll get into this in a little while, but if you have e as a base, we use the natural log function. But that's gonna be something that comes a little bit later, because there's a little more to that than this is going to be. So we can actually get into doing some of these now. And I'm still gonna go ahead and I'm going to take what we did here on the last page. Let me flip it back over so we can see. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this drawn back in over here. Just so I've got something to reference as I'm doing this. So I've got log. I think I did that the right way. Yeah. Okay. And how that works for me if I'm asked a question, such as explaining in terms of a logarithmic function how to write 7 squared equals 49 as an equivalent statement involving a logarithm. Okay, so I've got this, so b to the p equals n. Using this, I want to get it back into a log. So let's see here. Log, this number is going to be my base. My base here is 7. Then n is going to be like my answer is, which is 49 equals my exponent, which is 2. And if I look at it, I'm like base, exponent, 2, answer, 49. And I just keep telling myself, base, exponent, answer. 7 squared is 49. 7 squared is 49. Okay. And work it that way. It's, it's like any other formula you ever use. It takes a while to kind of get used to the way it's going to look. But we have to be able to go both ways. So here I went from an exponent to a logarithm. Now I have it in a logarithm form. And again, if I don't see a base number there, I'm always going to assume it's 10. 
So I'm going to go ahead and write that in, at least on this one. If I want to turn that into its exponential form, and the exponential form will always be a true math statement, what would my exponential function look like? Try to work this into this format. Yeah, 10 cubed equals 1,000, and we know that to be true. Base, exponent, answer in air quotes. And that form will never change on these as I'm getting ready to do those. Oops, I almost moved my page. So again, when I'm doing these, the key is just kind of understanding what the parts are and what they do. Now, for now, for now I'm going to skip these two. We may come back, depending on how things are going. I just don't think we want to get quite that deep yet with some of the theoretical stuff. I want to keep with some of the straight up things we're doing here. Okay, find each value of f of x, log base 2 of x. Write the function's input as a power of 2, and then find it as the exponent. So basically, here's what we're going to do. When you're asked one of these, if they ask for f of 16, I'm going to do my writing, I guess I'll do it over here. Here's what they're actually asking you when this happens. And there's two ways I can do it, and I'll show you both. I always, when I'm trying to evaluate, I like to set the expression equal to x because then it starts to look like what we were doing up here. Because if I look at this and I'm trying to go from a log into an expression, what I can do is I can go, okay, there's my base, there's my exponent, there's my answer. Two to what power gets me to 16? I thought I heard it. Four. So really, all that we've done is a simple math problem, but it just looks weird because of the format that it's in. It seems absolutely odd that we would do this, but it's true. So I'm going to do that same thing with each one of these. So like for instance here, if I want to do a function valued at 64, okay, that's going to be my x value. So if I have log base 2 of 64, yep, and I'm hearing people say it already. Again, it's my base, my exponent, and my solution. I need to figure out what 2 to what power is 64. And typically these are always going to be whole numbers, so it's not going to be some goofy decimal. If you're not sure, play with it a little bit. I think I heard somebody say 6, so I'll go ahead and put it in here. But, since I know somebody always figures this out, let's say you can't come up with a number. It ends up being a really large number, and you're like, I don't know. There is a way to come up with the solution without having to play all the mental math games. And here's how it works. Once you have it set up in this format, you can do what's called a change of base. So for instance here, I can go to my calculator and I can take the log of 64, the log of my big number, divided by the log of my base. So what ends up happening here, let me get out of here, log, if you haven't played with this before, is right down here on the left edge. It automatically gives you a parenthesis, so don't give yourself another one but you do have to close it at the end. So if you do the log of your sub base divided by the base, amazing. And that works every single time. So if you ever have a logarithm that isn't base 10, you always have this as an option. But there's still some things we like about being able to understand what's going on here. Ooh, a fraction, yuck. All right, log base 2 of 132nd. 
Now before some of you with your calculators start telling me answers, let's think about this for a second. 2 to the x equals 1 over 32. Two quick things I should be able to do in my head probably. Forget about the fact this is a fraction right now. 2 to what power gets me to 32? 5. But when you go from a whole number to a fraction, or a fraction to a whole number, how am I going to get that 32 to the bottom of my fraction? Negative 5. Because again, if you take it to a negative exponent, that doesn't make the value negative. It just says, give me the reciprocal of that. 2 to the 5th power is 32, but I want 1 32nd. It's negative 5. Could I still do log of 1 32nd divided by a log of 2? I'm pretty sure I could. Let's make sure. So I always have the backup plan, but my initial plan, every time I do one of these, should be using my brain. Because again, if you don't use your brain, it's going to go mush. Cool. Okay. So that's always an option that you've got. And that's going to be true with any of these. If I take my log, now I'm looking for 1 8th. It's the exact same idea, except now the question isn't 2 to what power is 32. It's 2 to what power is 8. 3, and since I'm going from whole number to fraction, negative 3, because I need that flip. I need that reciprocal. So there's this direct relationship between logarithms, which, by the way, are what makes your cell phones work. So be thankful for these instead of wondering, where's the application for this? That's where the application shows up. It's part of the programming of them. Now, don't ask me to explain the part of the programming because that's I can't explain that to save my life. But I have read that. Hmm. F of 1. 2 to what power is 1? 0. Nicely played. So understanding your exponent rules, your squares, your cubes, really have a good impact here to make this a little bit easier if you don't want to play with the calculator on all of them. So when I'm doing this, would it be possible to evaluate f of 0? So could I? do this. Yeah, I can't think of a number that's going to take something to some power and get zero. I don't, I don't think we can do that. So, no. And then you can kind of do your own explanation here, but There's not going to be a value that I can take that exponent to that's going to get me 0. And the reason really behind that is that's where my asymptote's going to be at. That's where my wall is. That's where I'd get an error message if I was trying to work this one out. So I start to look and I'm like, okay, I can kind of see how this is going. We haven't even started playing with the graphs yet, but we'll see that in a minute here. We're going to focus more on the graphs tomorrow. So for f of x equals log base 2 of x, between which two integers does f of 40 lie? You're like, wait a minute, what? Okay, f of 40 means I'm sticking in 40 where x goes. And you might look at this at first and say, well, can I just do change a base? Can I just do log of 40 divided by log of 2? Well, let's see. Because typically on all of these, there's always options that we have available to us. So it looks like
because when I use my change of base, I get 5.32. Now there is, oops, let me get my calculator out of the way. There is another way that I could do it, but we haven't gotten into the graphing yet. So I can't, I can't explain quite yet with your values why you might be able to just look at that and tell which values it would be between right away, but we'll get there. So let's see. Ooh, the challenge one. This is the one I've been waiting for. Estimate the log of 95 without using a calculator. You're like, what? Do it without using a calculator. Party, you're out of your mind. Let's think of a couple that might be easy. Because again, what's my base here when I don't see a little number? 10. Okay. So I'm looking at log base 10 of 95. Now, I really... Let's see, so 10 to the x equals 95. What's a number that's somewhat close to 95 that would be easy to work with here? Like 10 to what power, let's see, squared. Because I look at this and I know that 10 squared equals 100. So without even knowing this value for sure, because here my x value would be 2. If I were to take a guess at this, I don't know, maybe like 1.9? Let's see. Now that we've actually kind of used a little sense to try and figure it out, let's see how close we get. Log of 95. 1.97, 1.98. That's not a bad guess. But those are the types of things when you're asked to estimate looking at that and then finding a value that's close that you would know the answer to lets you get an idea of how this may work. With base 10, that's a little easier. With other bases, you may have to chat about it a little bit to make that one work out a little bit easier. So here's your job. The practice that starts at the bottom of this sheet so number one down here at the bottom and flipping on to the back, this is going to be homework check two, number two, finishing this off. So the bottom of 10B, and I believe I've marked 11A on the back here, yes. And I will say this in advance for the graphing. This is going to be a little bit more in advance of what you have. These, either have you sketch or use the table on the calculator that you're working with to just get a couple of whole number values that'll work. We'll get more in depth tomorrow about how I can come up with those values really quick and easy with some base numbers or with a parent graph. But today, just kind of playing with these a little bit is going to be enough to get you going. So that would be assignment two, finishing this guy off. And that other sheet that you got, this would be assignment three in homework check two. And this is absolute review of what we just got done doing. So if you're trying to find something to be able to help you when you're going back, this is from the section 8182 that we just got done with. It's just asking more questions on having you explain something. What's going on with this? What's going on with that? So you may need to go back and look at that. And just remembering that would be the formula that you're looking at when you're trying to figure out these things, whether it's punching it on the calculator, figuring out a growth rate, figuring out the amount of time, but it's basically just like what we did in that section of the quiz. Tomorrow we will get more into the graphing aspect of things and changing things around a bit more. I just wanted to kind of get you a little bit of a challenge here at the start so you could discover a few things on your own, and then when we actually get into the section, it can be like, oh, Oh, that's not so bad. 
So we'll have that ready for any questions you got tomorrow and we'll get kind of bombing along with this next section then.